Yo, welcome to Book Smart Street Smart. It's your girl Serena here. And it's your boy D Me. So we've been together for four years now, right? So we thought with our years of experience, why not ask you for your dating dilemmas? That's right, we're talking about all things living with in-laws, Instagram and its role in the relationship. And those tick boxes that everyone seems to have. So if you want to find <laughs> out our advice to you, then keep it locked, stay exactly. tuned all the way to the end. Let's go! Right, should we get into the first dilemma? First dilemma, who's ready? So, <laughs> in love with my mate's sister, what shall I do? She wants to tell everyone, but I don't. I wanted to read that one out. Oh, sorry, I've read it out now. Uh, Come on, let's get into it. We've got to help the people. So, in love with my mate's sister. So, this is from a guy. So, this, I've got to be honest, don't show the name just in case. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the best thing here is honesty, isn't it? Honesty. Nothing beats honesty. Right. You've got two sisters. What would you do if one of your mates turned around and went, bro, listen? Like if, if the guy's good, like if, if he's actually a friend of yours, you'd want your sister to be with someone who's, who's like that, innit? Yeah. Um, but but what would you do, right, if he's one of your mates who aren't great and he's a bit of a fuckboy? Then you... I'd speak to my sister and tell her. Uh, yeah, but then what if your sister goes and tells your mate, oh, this is what my brother's you saying about you? I'd sit there both down. Yeah, but that I'd, would ruin I'd... your relationship with your friend. It, it would, like, it wouldn't really ru ruin the relationship. Just being honest is, like, being honest is good. Honest is the best. So just sit down with them both and say, listen, this is, like, you're, you've been my friend. I've seen you do X, Y, and Z. Why, why are you now, like, with my sister? Like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Have that kind of conversation with yeah. them. Yeah. And if he's like, no, genuinely, okay, you might have seen that but this is what it is for me, then I'll be like, okay, cool. But if you're going to respect my sister, you're going to respect me, then mm. it's cool. I've had a similar situation, actually, with, yeah. with my sister of mine. Yeah, you have, yeah. So uh, Dee's sister actually got married to somebody that um, Dee knew previously anyway. Yeah. Um, but I think what you have to accept in those situations is once that happens, right, and your sister or your brother gets with your friend, you have to know that that relationship with your friend is going to be different. Yeah, it's going to be different. It changes. It changes. As soon as you, your sister gets with, um, your friend gets with your sister or something like that, that friend isn't the same. They aren't the same around you. You aren't the same around them. It's different. Yeah. Look, you've got our Break blessing. Break the news. <laughs> Break the news, mate. And let us know how it goes as well. Let us know. Yeah. Go on, you can do the next one. This one's a funny one. Go on, what? Oh, go on. <laughs> I'm six foot two. He's five foot eight. <laughs> we don't have a problem. Sorry, it's not, I'm not laughing. It's just funny. I'm just, I'm just imagining it. Uh, <laughs> go on, read it again. Read it again. <laughs> he has to sniff on his tippy toes to give him a kiss. Anyway, uh, I'm six foot two. He's five foot eight. <laughs> we don't have a problem. We are worried about what other people think and stops us progressing. Oh. You know what? Oh, that's cute, man. Don't worry about what other people think, man, isn't it? Fucking, if you're you happy, be you, man. Well, if you think about it, you when I wear... You have to wear flats your whole life. <laughs> and he has to wear, like, you know, trainers with a big fucking wide girth. <laughs> oh, you know what, though? Well, when <laughs> I cute. wear heels, I'm near enough your height. And in certain heels, I can be a little bit taller than you. You've never been taller than me, but yeah. Um... In certain heels, I think. Okay, yeah, but you can't even walk in them once or less. <laughs> but anyway, you're... Rough... So how does that make you feel when I'm taller than you? But you're not taller than me. Or if... Well... But if you was, you, you are. As long as we're happy, it's cool. Yeah. I don't think it's that deep, honestly. I feel like it used to be more of a thing, isn't it? When, when like, Desi families would be, oh, Munda, Lumba, like, what, yeah, how, how would they Yeah, my mum would be like that, but fuck it. Oh, would as you? As long as you're happy, you're happy. Yeah, it's not that deep. Don't worry. Yeah, it's fine. That's so, minor, yeah. isn't it? Jal, you'll be okay. Okay, this is a good one. He always has a problem with meeting my family and puts it off. It's really upsetting for me. Oh, okay. That's really sad, you know. Let's have a look. She wants to Bajardi. see who the person is. Oh, Bajardi. That's really sad, that is. No, I... you should... Um, no, Go on, from a guy's perspective. Actions, how I believe things... What would, how would I say this best? Actions speak louder than words, and it... Like, if, if someone's doing something that doesn't make you feel good, 
then that should speak louder than if they're saying, oh, I love you, or I want to be with you, blah, blah, blah. You should look at what that person is doing because that maps to what they're actually saying. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know what? It goes back to, again, that this mentality, isn't it? Where it's always been like, oh, how would you say? It's like the, the men, you, you, that's your family now when you get married. And then the husband never sees the wife's family as his family. So it's kind of like, he's saying, well, why should I make the effort? Like, that's not my family. No. Obviously, it's the in-laws, isn't it? No, I'm joking. <laughs> He's saying that. Shout out to the in-laws. <laughs> We're using this phrase right now. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, father-in-law, mother-in-law. Thank you. No, to you be don't fair, even know what's happening. I have, to, I have to give, uh, <laughs> not even credit, because it's not, nothing to give credit about, but it's just nice that like Deep does like spend a lot of time with my family and vice versa. So it's never been one of those things. Yo, don't say that too loud, because uh, Nick and them are going to be listening. They're going to be rinsing me in the group. Like, <laughs> the US anyway. boys are going to be But this is the thing. Why are they going to rinse? you what's to rinse about so what it's just spending just time with your in-laws yeah, I, I don't care I don't, I, if i did i would stop yeah yeah but i'm saying but, but why do they think that like why do why do it's a man them thing that's it even if it that they go and do this nick was basically lives in leamington with his in-laws so <laughs> let's not get into you anyway um but everyone does it but everyone rinses each other so it's all good. but why why is that it's just thing? a man them thing to but rinse what, each other man, okay yeah but it, it's a man them thing to rinse because you're going to go and see your in-laws and what's wrong with going to see your in-laws and spending time with your in-laws They're all men often. are like this white people i've been around loads of white people i talk about in-laws the garlic everyone yeah black people everything mm. so. i think you know what at the end of the day like you have to make effort with your you partner's family yeah two families become one family yeah. if you believe that you're getting you do yeah find so. out find out what the reasons are yeah go on. Go on you. he won't let me post certain pics on ig is that controlling or is that okay <laughs> that's let nah, me answer because you on. keep answering first okay so he won't let you post certain pictures on instagram <laughs> you know what firstly it depends instagram, on the kind instagram, of picture instagram. It depends on the kind of picture, because I get it, right? I think firstly, it depends on the kind of picture, because I do understand, and we spoke about this with Jyoti as well, I do understand, right, if your partner's a bit hesitant, if you want to post like a bikini picture or something like that, because some people don't like it. Not even bikini pictures, we're going. Okay, or like clothes that are a bit more revealing. I get why it could make a man feel a certain way, because obviously he doesn't necessarily, he might not necessarily like that. And I think, you know, we have to respect people's opinions. But I think also, if you're cool with posting things like that, and you want to, and he's stopping you... Then be then, you, boo. Yeah, then be you. And also, then, obviously, that person's not going to be for you. I think um, man them need to look at uh, girls' Instagram pages. And, like, if they're not comfortable with the, how that girl posts, then, then don't be with that person because... Um, like, you, when they get with you, they're going to carry on posting like that. So, and they're going to be like, oh, but I do this all the time. Like, that's yeah, well, that's a really so good point. Just find girls' Instagram pages, look at their Instagram page, and are you comfortable with everything that they post on it? Can you take that, um, can you show that Instagram to your friends and your family? Uh, and you be comfortable with it, whether even if she wears revealing clothes, can you be comfortable that she wears revealing clothes and still show your friends and family and say, this is who she is? And, that's cool. If you're not comfortable with it, then you need to find someone that you can show their Instagram yeah. page. Because Instagram page nowadays is what we show each other. Like, oh, this is... It's like need. your CV, yeah. isn't it? Like so, your CV, yeah. And same with girls. Girls don't look at guys and do the same thing as well. Right, next one. Um, okay, this is a good one. I don't feel a spark, but on paper, he ticks all the boxes. Do I stick it out? Okay. First bad thing you've said is tick all the boxes. Tick boxes is ruining, in my opinion, people meeting each other. Um, I think females are worse for this than males. Like females have very long tick... Males do too, like us men. Then we have tick boxes as well, but we're, we're willing to compromise on some of them tick boxes as if, if like, some things are working. Like, say, if, I'm, if I meet Serena and we go out on a few dates and she hasn't got all the things, criteria that I need. Which I don't. I um, them but, all anyway. But it's cool. Like, uh, we'll, we'll gloss over the other stuff. Whereas females won't even get to having a first date with you if there isn't a tick box. You can't say females, but... Ladies, yeah. girls, whatever. They won't, they'll be like, okay, um, or if he's not over six foot, if he hasn't got a uni degree, if he hasn't got a fifth job that's 50k plus, if he's not driving a Mercedes, like, um, you know, people... But this are, is, Hon, you're diverging from the question. It says, I don't feel a spark. Yeah, so, um, and firstly, we don't talk about tick boxes. A spark is more important than these tick boxes that you're talking about then 
So like you're on about this. The right, but do you think you have to have a spark? You don't have to have a spark straight someone? away. Like it, sometimes. But then how long until you? you I think realize? you should give it a chance. Like, so how many? Like what? What do you think? If you put give a it number like on a it, three or four, five dates, something like that, isn't it? Okay. And yeah. if it's still no sparks happening, then um, then say I'll. See, say I it. think in my head. It's like three dates. I think you can tell in three dates. The first one, it's a bit awkward. You're kind of getting to know each other. The second one, you're getting more comfortable. The third one, I feel like you're comfortable in a way to yeah. see whether you think that person, you can see something. Shut <laughs> up. Our, our situation was so different though because we knew each other from years before. Anyway. Um, so, <laughs> so I think if you're not feeling the spark and it's been a while, then... Yeah the tick box is need to give it anything. a bit more time but if it's not happening then just say listen i'm not feeling any, uh, feeling a spark here and boom okay so i'm dating a 10 out of 10 husband material but different religions i think firstly it really depends how religious you are um but i do feel like i mean you've spoken about this before I, I do think religion does play a big part when it comes to finding your soulmate or your partner um especially when families get involved and you know, there might be certain things that are really important to you and then not being able to relate to them with your partner, that could really kind of cut you up deep inside. Mm. So I think... It depends how much it means to you, isn't it? If, if it means a lot to you, if you're Sikh or if you're Hindu or if you're Muslim, and that means a lot to you, like you go to the Gurdwara, you go to the um, Mandras or you go to the Majjit or whatever, um, and that's a big part of your life, then it's going to be difficult when someone else from a different religion comes in. Uh, and doesn't like get involved with that because you, when, when you're two people and you get married and you become one like if you're doing two separate things and you live in two separate lives it's like that isn't how it should be yeah, but if it doesn't like sure. say say if you're, you're you're willing to like uh become the other religion like um what's it called convert, convert. to the other religion yeah so do you revert. would you say then you have to convert in order i would say to you have to, to convert work. i'm just saying if you're not if you're not religious at all, it doesn't mean anything to you. Then it doesn't. Then, then this conversation yeah, is irrelevant. Yeah, but it does, it's not. Say so if not, you're Sikh and you want to marry a Hindu, and but you've never got to the Gurdwara, you don't really believe in Sikhism. You just ha you just have the name core in your name, but you don't believe. Yeah, in Yeah, but it. you know what I found, right? When it comes to religion, sometimes people say they're not religious, but then all of a sudden, when it the comes to like, things. hold on, but when it comes to having a kid, and then it's like, no, but I want my kid to have, have these sing, conversations. Or I want my kid to have. Just core. have a conversation. Yeah, but sometimes, how many conversations can you have? Like sometimes you can't think of certain situations, and then they occur. Well, have these conversations, man. Just have the conversations, and yeah. if it means if it if um if you're happy with it, then you're happy with it. But you don't forget, like. You live with these things forever. So. You have to you have to really hash it out. Like I've got quite a few friends and even brides. I have a lot of brides actually that are having interracial marriages. And it is hard. Like you need to really have those nitty gritty conversations. Like families have like You need to be ride apart. or die for each other, man. Because yeah. obviously once, uh, it, once it comes down to it, no one's at your back. So it's only going to be you. Do you think, right, if I was a different religion... Mm. I wouldn't would... have entertained this. Because I, I, like I said, it meant a lot to me. Hmm. So you just wouldn't entertain it from the day dot? Not, uh, not as a long-term thing, no. Yeah. What do you mean long-term thing? So you'd entertain it as a short-term thing? Yeah. Shut up! I'm just Shut saying. up! But anyway, um, like for me, it meant a lot to me. I, th I personally think, right, if you're somebody who knows that religion's going to play a massive importance to you, just don't even entertain somebody who's of a different religion. Like, just don't let it happen if you can help it. Yeah, and some people are a certain way like their whole life and then they meet someone and then they change it for that other person because they justify it because of that person like what are you trying to say don't forget i don't understand what you're trying to say like say if someone's like hardcore seeker and then they meet someone else that isn't seek yeah and then they all of a sudden change their shit and they're like oh like you know like people that you meet they're like oh i'll never do this i'll never do that but they do it for that person that they met and they mm -hmm. justify it because of that person and that they're in love don't do that because later on in time, you'll resent shit. Shit will go, like, stuff, like, it isn't all rosy, rosy. Yeah. Love only takes you so far. You have to be practical. As oh, okay. <laughs> Started off so well, and now every time I look at him, he totally gives me the ick. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what? I don't know, man. Some people, there's too much. Especially girls, females, yeah, you're too much, why man. Is that too much? I actually messaged this girl when she said that and I asked her for more context yeah. and she said that they've been dating for six months and now she, he's, 
she, he's given her the ick because he's a bit too much. He's a bit too overbearing, like always showering her with compliments. And what the fuck? Man, man, them cannot win. <laughs> <laughs> if he didn't shower her with compliments, she'd say he doesn't shower her with compliments. No. Yo, you, yeah. You know who you are. I'm looking at your display picture right now. Yo, you've got a guy ready to give you some love and affection and it's too much for he's giving you the ick. No, but okay, I then fuck him off, that. Then fuck him off and, and, and go be single and have cats your whole life. Babe, don't be That's me. true. No, but the it's, thing it's is... It's true, man. You can either... You, you can win or lose. Like, okay, It's up to the... like. Don't get me wrong. The man them can... Should know. Yeah, roughly. but... Right. Can I just say... No? Do you have to put it in context? No, I get not. it when someone's a bit overbearing. You know when it's always... Like, always giving you compliments even if something's, like, bad. Let's say, for example, right, if I was wearing a really ugly dress, right? Yeah. And you were like, oh, you look absolutely spectacular. Oh, yeah, that's true. That would give me the it because I'd be like, you're not even being but even honest. Even so, like, yeah, okay, she's not being honest, but so, like... Okay, she should have a conversation with him and just say, listen. Yeah, but how? Oh, that's so mean to go and sit down with your partner and be like, listen. No, say, say nice. I'd rather you be honest because I, okay, that's, actually, that's quite funny because I, I, I come up with, I was going on Instagram this morning and there was a, there was a post that was like, don't be with a nice guy. Oh. Be with a good guy. The nice guy will, that says things. It was a girl that said it. It was a uh, female. She was like, the nice guy will say things um, nice to you, even though they don't mean it, but later on in time, they'll resent like they'll always like agree with you. They'll always like do whatever you want them to do, but later on in time they'll resent that. Wow, yeah. I like that. So, so, so what so was the be quote with again? A good guy. Don't be with a nice guy. Be with a good guy. Okay, I like so, that. I think that's very true for us, us two as well. So actually, yeah, I get that if you put it in that yeah. kind of context. Yeah, because then I think be if that nice, is... but don't be fucking like over. Fucking bearing. Yeah. yeah so really. if you. But I want... wouldn't tell you you look nice if you don't look nice. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't. He would call me up straight up. I compliment you more than anyone. Like he I shower you with he, compliments. He gives me so many compliments. I so gas you, her up. You only have to go for my Instagram comments to see. No, that's nothing like, like in real life. Yeah, but obviously Instagram, in real life. Sorry, don't, yeah. Don't I believe shouldn't anything have, on yeah, Instagram. I shouldn't have. Um, Instagram doesn't mean shit. Yeah. In real life. Yeah. But um, what's it called? Like when you when you're doing it when it's not the case. That's 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 wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if he's giving you the X, sack it off, girl. Sack it off and find someone. But uh, don't be with a nice guy, be with a good guy. Yep. <laughs> right, what we got? <laughs> this oh, one? this is a good one. He swore at me in front of our friends. I think that was disrespectful. Should I say something? Yeah, 100%. I hate stuff like that. I think it's so rude and embarrassing, especially in front of friends and family for your partner to, uh, you know, like call you, uh, I don't even want to say the words, but what? I don't like to swear. Call cool, what? You know, like a, a B word or a, a, like a cow and things yeah. like that. That's so disrespectful. It's really hurtful. Shut the fuck up. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> when you said that, I thought you were being serious. <laughs> anyway. Uh... <laughs> I thought you were being serious. <laughs> but um, nah, man. You should always respect your woman. Like in front of people, you should respect her because... That's well, not showing just the world. in front of people. Yeah, I'm, I'm on about yeah. more so in front of people because yeah, you're showing so you're showing other people what how they should respect your your partner or your wife or your girlfriend or whatever. Like, so if you respect, don't get me wrong, uh, we're all human and we all make mistakes. So um, like, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. There's been times when we haven't in yeah. front of other people, but we always call each other out afterwards yeah. and we speak about it and stuff. Okay, and I good. think it's all also. Um, you don't, it doesn't have to be a conversation where you're shouting and stuff, but just a bit later on, you can just say, listen, I really didn't like what you said. That was really hurtful. Um, and see, how, if that other person responds and is really defensive and like, oh, what are you talking about? You know, you were doing this, you instigated me. I think that's quite a big red flag there. No, but not, not, not necessarily a red flag. If they can understand where they've come from afterwards, like it might blow up a little bit, but if, if you can get to the conversation properly and have a good conversation. And he should apologise. Cool. Like he should apologise. Yeah. What? Um, you should? Um, oh, this is really sad. Okay. Um, <laughs> been together five years and he's never told me he loves me. All lovey dovey in the first two years. Is that odd? Yes. That's fucking odd. If you've been together five years, he hasn't said he loves you. There's something wrong. That's really sad. But then there might be something wrong with that person. He might yeah. be traumatized. Like, like, so. so if, if he genuinely wants to be with you, you need to like have therapy and shit. Like, this is so pretty some serious. Some people do find it hard. Like, you know, like, for example, me, I can't remember the last time I said to my dad, I love you. Yeah, but that's... You was, was the first person to say it to me, wasn't you? Like, you out of us both, you said it first. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Shut up. 
Yeah. So, um, so, like for example, I've never said I love you to my dad, but that's only because you still could say it to me and else. my dad are really awkward with each other. Like we don't yeah. even hug or anything. It's uh, just you and obviously your I love my dad so much, but it's just a bit. You don't like, have a like you, with your family. You don't have any kind of uh, your mum. If I tried to hug your mum. Uh, she'll be like, she gets all awkward. She's we're like, all oh. awkward with hugs and stuff. I don't like, know no what one it hugs, is. Like, Except no for my little sister. Enough. She's my the family. Big we're one. really lovey dovey. Like, my mum was really Yeah, she gives a my big, nana. warm hug. My dad was like, we used to we used to give each other hugs and like proper like uh, affectionate. If this person genuinely wants to be with you, have therapy. And it, like, yeah, go. Not everyone can just afford therapy. But you can have it on like NHS and stuff. You can go can to the you? NHS and say, look, it's a, you're depressed or whatever. Don't want to live with in laws. That's it. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know about this one. This is quite. This is quite a. Um, this is quite a, a, a deep to topic, isn't it? I think. Um, if a girl is like, this is another girl tick box. Oh, have to have our own place. Blah blah. But if you're if you're not ready at that point to have your own place, sometimes you need to be open to the like now. We're gonna be in a cost of we're in a cost of living crisis. We're gonna be in like deep into re recession, maybe if, even. If, if you're not clued up on yeah. what's happening, check out our latest yeah, podcast. Yeah, check out our latest. Like, okay. Check out our latest podcast, while well, the one before this one, about uh, finance and where the world economy is going. Like right now, it might not be a good time to have your own place. Like it might be cool, like two or three years to be with your parents, to be with in-laws. Like I don't think it should be like a make or break deal. I'm not living with my in-laws unless like they've done you a really wrong and it's really bad. Mm. But if the person respects you, like it shouldn't be like a deal breaker, make or break, yeah. oh, not being, it's a flat mouth. I think, you know what, you it know? really depends on you as a person. If you're someone who is accommodating, who can respect your in-laws, their values, what they think, and you know, just get on with it for a little bit until you can eventually find your own place, then do it. But if you're somebody who is dead against it, obviously you are you can choose whatever you want in life, but you actually might write off somebody who could be really good for you mm. just because of that situation. But another thing is, so there's some people out there who um, will not just want to stay with in-laws for one or two years, but will want to stay with them for the rest of their life. So what do you do oh, in you that situation like, then? You mean like the boys? Yeah. You can't ever go into a relationship thinking that you should change this person's mind on something. Mm. So you shouldn't be like, so I shouldn't go into a relationship thinking that you, I can change you. You shouldn't go into a relationship thinking you can change. Like if that person wants to change for the, each other, that's cool. But you can't be like, oh no. Like go, go into a relationship then two years in and be like, no. Like you knew what it was from the start. Like if he, you've had that conversation from the start and then in your mind you're like, oh, he, He's good in all the other ways. That's the one thing that lets him down. So I'm just going to work on that and like try to like change his mind on it. That's not a good thing to do. Like in my opinion, like if someone wants to live at home with their in-laws, with their family, and you're going to move, move into it, then you should be open to do that. And if you're not open to do it, then don't do it. Don't be with that person. Yeah. Can I just ask, so out of interest, right, from a male's perspective, because I know yeah. so many women are going to be wondering this. Yep. So as the voice of all men today, all brown mm -hmm. men today, when it comes to like living with in-laws, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you think brown boys are so like adamant that? Well, I can't talk for don't... brown boys. I can talk for myself. Like when I growing up, um, from from the day that, like I can't talk for brown boys. I can't talk for my own situation, isn't it? Yeah, but you're the voice of all brown boys now. I can boys hear now. you talking. I can hear you like. Yeah, but to obviously, talk. do you not speak to your mates and stuff about it? No. Oh. We don't talk, Taryn, Mr. Daliba. Behind the camera, by the way. Do you ever talk to your friends about living with in-laws? No. We don't talk about this shit. Boys are so, like, girls would chat so much about stuff yeah, like Yeah, you this. chat so much and you give each other the wrong advice. But man, <laughs> no, no, it's true. You can chat all you like, mate. Hey, don't do that shit. And then that same fucking idiot is the one that's living with her in-laws, taking shit from her mother-in-law. <laughs> Yeah, she's get gassing up, don't take that, don't be with him, and then she'll go fucking be with someone that does the same shit, so don't, you Karen, fuck off. Anyway, um... Karen uh, Reed. <laughs> yeah. From me, from my perspective, I grew up my whole life, my mum said, when you get married, you're having your own place. That was my whole life. I read, is that what your mum said? You knew that? You know this. My mum never wants, she said, when you get married, from the, like, from the moment I can remember, like, having conversations with my mum about this, you have to have your own place, and it? She yeah. always said it from day dot, because she's been through the situations with her mother-in-law. Um, which is all good now, but I mean, like, at the start, you know, yeah. none of them was ready. My mum wasn't ready. Um, the family wasn't Everyone ready. Everyone was learning. They was learning, they? yeah. yeah. So, but they're, you know, they've got a great relationship now. 
Yeah, so that was my whole life. And then my dad passed away. So then my mum was still saying, oh, you should have your own place. But I've always been like, oh, now I need to look after my mum. Yeah. It's simple. And even to this day, my mum says, oh, you should have your own place. But I always see it as we should look after, you know, like I'm the eldest, I'm the boy. I'm the, you know, it's my responsibility, it's my duty of care to look after my mum. And hence why I would. So a lot of people, a lot of brown uh, boys, um, are Mali Kodal, they've had a really good, like, I haven't been as Mali, like, hardly at all. Like, I do my own no, shit around the house. Mum looks after D a lot. Uh, but no, no, no. no. But I do my own well, shit. yeah, yeah. That's what like, I'm saying. Have, like, so mom looks after me. D a lot, but as in she lets you do your own stuff. She she does not molly coddle you at all. Yeah, like, yeah. She's brought him up really well. No, but like I wash my own dishes. I like, like yeah. I, I clean up around the house. Look he after cooks. My, I can cook and can do things. Uh, I bet your mom's watching this now. Like mm. David, he you bastard! <laughs> does, you do nothing. You lazy bastard. Like, mom, I'm always lazy to my mum. But, but some people like they don't even make their own bed and shit. They don't put yeah. their clothes away. They are like. Um, Loads can't of do stuff. their own washing. Yeah. yeah they, don't, they don't do like a lot of shit. Like yeah. they come home. Like if I, some people can come home at three o'clock in the morning and wake their mum up and say, "Oh, can we have food?" And the mums would do it. Yeah. My mum would beat the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. And like, but some people would just be like, "Mum, it's what I want," and they just get it. Yeah. Which is most people actually. Yeah. That's the reason why they don't want to, because because their wife won't do that. Yeah. So if I came to you and I said, "Serena, make me some of this," you I'd do it for you. Like, but say say if uh, I had my mum that done it. Like, and I'd be like, mum, make me prota today, make me this. And I came to you, you can't make prota. You can't, <laughs> you can't do shit. And even like, even if you did agree, even if you did agree, mm. you couldn't make it as good as my mum anyway. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. But say, say, if, but most, most, more like, you wouldn't. I'd be like, Serena, can you make prota? Oh, I'm so tired, no, 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 blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, just have this no, fucking I mean... tuna sandwich or some shit. <laughs> and like, you'd be like, obviously, you're going to be like, okay, let's just stay at home with mum. <laughs> Because she'll make me my prote. No, no, yeah. And there's other shit, there's yeah. more shit into it. So do you think, so this is an interesting uh, point, right? Because a lot of um, brown guys, right, will say that they want to live with their in-laws because they want them to be looked after. But what you're basically saying is, it's actually the other way around. It's because they want to be looked after by their parents. Yeah, so that's what you, most people is. So do you think that, but obviously people don't That's what say I can that. see. Yeah, but I'm... brown boys don't say that. This is the thing, they're not honest about that. They say... Oh, we have to look after our parents. They're going to get old. They need people yeah, around them. I think that's a conversation. But it's actually that's the happening. other way around. Probably. Most most parents don't need anyone's help. Yeah. Like most parents are cool. Like most of our parents are like what, fifty years old, fifty five years old. We don't need to live with them and like have caring them and stuff. They can look after themselves, innit? Yeah. Or well, depending on your parents, but obviously both of our parents are. Literally yeah. I mean, some people yeah. need care. That's cool. Then you should be there. But I mean, like, yeah. If you're telling yourself that you need to be there because you need to care for your mom and dad and stuff like that, you probably don't need to. Right, how to deal with childish sister-in-laws who are older than you and your partner. Mm -hmm. So, I'd <laughs> say in this situation, sometimes it's not about dealing with in-laws. At the end of the day, like that's your family. Mm. So, you might have certain ideals in your head of how you want your in-laws or your mother-in-law to be. And they might not be that way and you have to just accept mm. it. Like you might have a sister-in-law who's really quiet, but you always wanted a sister-in-law who'd go out with you and do X, Y, and Z, or you might yeah. wanted a sister-in-law who was really girly and loved makeup and shopping, and it's your sister-in-law might be a tomboy. So I think you just kind of have to accept the way they are, but obviously not tolerate if they're saying mean things or doing mean things. Um, it's expectations. But so I think also sometimes I just think, what, what's the, what, what do they say? What's that phrase they say when they say, um, pick and choose your battles? Yeah. You can't be constantly having battles with people all the time over minor stuff. Like just sometimes accept the way things are and try and deal with it yourself rather than always trying to feel like you have to fix other people. Mm. Always remember you got to be strong in your own relationship and you can't let any outside forces affect, affect your relationship. That's it. Great cool. advice. There you go. I hope we've solved your dilemmas. Anyway, can I just say <laughs> on a side note, we're not advice relationship experts we're just too, so, don't, so don't take anything we say literally we're just two idiots on youtube